They told me that there wasn't going to be a Sense8 Season 2. But boy, is everybody wrong. I knew they were going to come out with the Sense8 Season 2. I mean, I was recommended by it. Uh, I can't remember his name, but one of my subscribers recommended it. And the first season of Sense8 was very odd, very strange. And I won't even lie. It takes a while to really get into because it's kind of everywhere. You don't know what's going on. It's a very slow revealing of the whole kind of plot of why these people are able to sense or really to our one person so to speak i mean i we have characters nomi lito will riley cassius wolfgang kayla and soon and then you have also these other characters that are involved with these people's lives i thought sensei really presented itself really well it was something i've really kind of never seen before which i really liked about it and there was a lot of great relationships being established and are established at the closing of season one season two picks up right after season one and i think this season two is more cohesive i think it is more kind of you get the plot you get what's going on i mean it takes a while because it's been so long since season one came out but i think you it's more understandable it's more coherent you could hear you or you could hear you could basically you know what's going on all right, you know what's going on in this season, and there's a lot of great individual stories, even though they're all one person, you know, if so to speak, and it's just really great where the characters are at this point. I mean, not I'm not going to give too much away because I want people to go see Sense8, but what I really enjoyed was the relationship, of course, with... I think everybody did. I think almost everybody loved this relationship with Wolfgang and Kayla. We know there was a, uh, should I, should we be together? Should we not? I mean, we see where Kayla is. She's married. Uh, she's not, she doesn't have any kids. She kind of took Wolfgang's advice and moved on, but yet she still is in love with Wolfgang. And so is Wolfgang. And Wolfgang is still trying where he's live where he lives at Berlin. He's just trying to uh, the aftermath of killing his uncle he he's just trying to survive at this point and then also take care of his friend uh we know at the season one he got badly hurt i think the season really if you love these two i mean every moment with these two they, they just have so much great chemistry and everybody does too all the characters have great chemistry with each other all the actors and stuff but these this is this was the heart for me this is the heart of sensei was those two characters wolfgang and kayla because they're in totally two different places yet they totally understand each other it was just a nice little romance that i i I, I support a lot so and Wolfgang was just so opposite with Kayla so in this season it does it, it's just as good it's just as good as season one it really goes somewhere I mean I really did enjoy the struggle with those two and what they have you know they don't as much as they don't want to be together they know in their hearts they do so i really did absolutely love that relationship but another relationship that is strong that's actually physical is will and riley's relationship uh we see them kind of hiding out their hot will has he's a junkie which was crazy like seeing the opening of sense eight season two and seeing that will was a junkie and riley was pretty much i don't know you know what? I can't really remember if she was actually doing some of it. She probably was. Yeah, I think she was. I mean, they were both junkies because Will can't escape Whispers. It's not like he did it just because. I mean, he's hiding because Whispers, you know, the guy who's pretty much after all of them, he kids he knows where will is so will has to kind of clear his mind so he doesn't find where will and riley is but not and everybody else i mean he's trying to he's holding a lot on his shoulders and i really did like will's character in this season other than season one and he, if there was a main character i think will is that main character he was the kind of the main character in season one you know seeing daryl hannah angelica uh meeting jonas and then we see more of that relationship kind of play out little by little in season two and in this season, he really just holds a, a lot on his shoulders. I mean, Will and Riley are trying to make a happy life, but they know they have to do something in order for everybody to be safe. They need to get whis uh, whispers. They need to get this organization. They need to just take it down. Uh, but the struggle that Will has, and everybody has a struggle in the season, is that 
you know, he can't go home. He can't go home. He can't go see his best friend. He can't see his dad, which I think was the most heartbreaking of them all. And Will, he breaks sometimes in the season. And I really did like, I appreciate the fact where they took his character and uh, the whole junkie aspect to it. And he is kind of like, he's kind of addicted to it a little bit. So I really did like where those, where these characters are at. I don't think Riley has too much to play in this season maybe in season one but i think she does have some shiny moments here and there but i, I feel like she's kind of just the joint of uh, will and she kind of gets lost in the shuffle but who doesn't get lost in the shuffle is nomi nomi was one of those brighter characters in season one she's definitely the hacker of them all she and her relationship uh with her girlfriend i mean it, it really showcases i think the season really showcases about love sex uh, sexuality uh where people's lives are at at the given point i mean it really showcases all that and with nomi she's on the run you know she's on the run as well uh she's trying to hide out she's with her girlfriend and the, her girlfriend i see in season two and this season two is that she generally loves nomi because she she wouldn't be doing this for nomi and she wouldn't be a fugitive for nomi as well well she's not really a fugitive but she wouldn't be on the run with her if she didn't really love her so i really did uh love that relationship as well and i really loved what nomi did played in this in this whole season too and i love love the interaction with her and son and we'll get to son in a moment uh, her and Son, when they're together, is pretty funny. I really did like those two uh, working together. And that's what I really... There were some interactions and some pe people talking with one another that you didn't really see too much in season one. And now you see it in season two and you love it. You're just like, that's kind of what I wanted in season one. I want to see these characters interact with each other even though they're supposed to be one person. They don't have that much interaction with each other. Another struggle in this season is Lito. Lito is trying his best. You know, he's trying to... Uh, uh, he, he, everybody found out he's gay. Uh, he's a action hero, and that's the whole kind of premise of his story through the season. Is just a lot of people, you know, in Mexico, especially in Mexico, uh, just really are just throwing a lot of shade on, on him. They're really kind of just really bringing him down. Uh, he's, I mean, you can only imagine in this season, and you know exactly what's going to happen. You, I mean, it's very predictable what's going to happen to Lito because he's come out gay and he's a Mexican. Uh, action star is that he loses a lot he loses a lot but it's like i said the love and the relationship that he has for his boyfriend and how those two stand tall and, and especially with their friend daniela i mean it's really uh something to see it's really something to see lito really struggling and uh, his depressed moments are kind of funny too they play it as a like, humor and stuff but you see him still i think lito he, there's a lot of great moments with lito in this season i don't necessarily think he was the best overall character is just because he kind of was doing the same thing over and over again in a lot of some of these episodes uh but he has this kind of like downfall but then uprise and then you know he has to do a lot of things uh with the responsibility or not responsibility but like you know coming out as gay so those were the interesting aspects of it but he's doing kind of the same moping around and stuff but he does do some he does have some moments here and there that i really enjoyed especially when he's uh talking to a lot of you know the different character different people and you know wolfgang's got his back too so i really like when wolfgang takes over his body or when lito's like with uh son and uh him and son have a i think son is one of the characters that has a lot of interaction with all these characters, which I love because she seems to be more in touch with everybody. And when she's in touch with Lito in this season, I really enjoyed it as well. So going to Sun, I think Sun's story was the more impactful one. I think the revenge story was uh, we've seen it before, but you were it had the more intense, of course, the more had more action moments of a lot of the different characters, and the, some of the characters definitely have a lot of action mo uh, moments, especially Wolfgang. But I think Sun and wanting to get back at her brother and just this whole trying to escape from prison. And then, you know, seeing where we see more of her backstory. We see more of uh, why she is who she is and maybe certain characters that she's uh, come across, which I absolutely love. I think Sun is the most strongest character in Sense8. And I think season two just really helps her character 
this season. I mean, I think it, we really got to really know Soon a little bit more, and we really got to feel Soon a little bit more. And uh, she's just one of the characters that you really just root for. She's the underdog. She's the one that has been doing the right thing, and the right thing always bites her in the ass. But I really feel like uh, her story was the more impactful, and we were the more rooting for her to succeed than maybe the other characters. Uh, the other character in here that I'm sad to see that he got replaced uh it took me a while to get used to the replacement but it was cassius you know cassius was the, the they replaced the actor um the the actor who's playing him right now in season two he was fine he did a fine job um you know it's just that it, it it's hard with this. I hate replacements in general. You know, I hate replacements when they replace an actor and on this, you know, for a different season or a different movie. Uh, but it's the same character. I mean, I would. I feel like. Uh, I, I just feel like for Sensei, it's more of a heartbreak because these characters have been so much in season one, and it's all about you know connecting with each other. Uh, um, and being able to swap bodies and stuff. And we've seen, you know, that and that, that actor did a fantastic job in season one. And I'm not saying season two's uh, this guy doesn't do a great job as well, um, this new actor. But it's just, it, it's, it, it sucks. You know, it sucks to see that, you know, I didn't follow you in season one. Now I'm following you in season two. You're a different actor. And he doesn't look, he doesn't look nothing like the other actor, just to let you know. That's why when I first saw him, when he first appears in season two, I'm like, Whoa, 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 is that Cassius? Like that that's not the same actor. I gotta look this up. And I was right. It's not the same actor. And uh he does it, but he does a good job. Uh, I do like where they take his story. I'm just, you know, just a little irk that I wish it was the same actor, but I do like where they take his story and what he's trying to do for Kenya. I believe it's Kenya. Uh what he's trying he's trying to help his people, man. And he finds out a lot of shady shit that's happening over there, so I do. I think that was more. Uh, it's more the politics side of that one, and I really did enjoy that. I, I I enjoyed a lot of these individuals' stories. You know, even Kayla. Kayla still struggling between Wolfgang and um and her her husband. But there's something there as well. There's something there that we find out towards uh, like the middle of the season and at the end that there's there's some there's some crazy shit that happens once we start drawing season two down to a close there's a lot of craziness all right there's a lot of unexpected things that happen which i really appreciate i was like holy crap like i didn't think that was gonna happen uh we see a lot of the other characters you know whispers does a great job the actor who plays him he's a great villain uh we see jonas come back we see angelica come back uh of course you know a little flashback sure we really dwell into what happened like how they end up being where they were at and how this all kind of came together and what's so cool is we get into more of okay are these the only people who are able to connect with each other and i'm just going to leave it at that i mean we i think you were we all asked that question uh multiple times while watching this so i think since eight season two did a fantastic job i think the characters where they're at right now from the start of season two and where they're at at the end is uh really phenomenal i think it just really kind of i honestly i think season two was better than season one just because season one was just a little bit slower and it really just takes a lot to pick up but since eight season two really has some beautiful shots of course you're always going to get some beautiful slow-mo shots and these kind of like little music video kind of uh shot takes too but uh and you get a little a little bit of a callback from season one but what i think what season sense eight season two does great this time around is it ups the action which i really appreciate i think the action was really intense and really great uh the acting is once again stellar in season two i will say though that there is some jokes in here that just really cringe worth like cringe worthy jokes you know it start then it starts becoming like a sitcom comedy some some moments here and there which i i just really don't understand it just doesn't belong in this type of series and you'll see it you'll see it when you're watching season two that there's like moments where it just kind of takes you out of it uh i think there's a couple moments i don't think well there's lesser moments like that in season one that's what season one does great but season two does try to play that and it's just the wachowskis doing what the wachowskis do um but i do think the wachowski did a great job you know i think they've created uh something that is really special you know we had the matrix which was cool of course all their movies have been 
kind of bombs at this point. But with Sense8, I think they're really great with Netflix and the teamwork they have because they're able to kind of explore a lot of different kind of ideologies, uh, ideas, uh, and like I said, sexuality, uh, love, uh, just a lot of what 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 it means to different lives and what it means like for where all these people are at and like learning about you know who they are and what they are. So I really do think the Wachowskis do a fantastic job and they've created something really special here. And I think season two never lets up. I think this is a perfect counter, uh, perfect hand to hand was season one. Uh, beautiful, like I said, direction was very beautifully done. The a lot of I think what really drives this season is just where the character, the characters, the core is the characters, and the core is what the the characters are doing and what they have to do to really be truly safe. The downfall is the last season. The season finale was a little bit like the very end was really it kind it did it didn't live you know it didn't live up to the hype of the season finale i think the season finale was just a little kind of a dud and it could have been so much better but it's not um it is what it is it does open doors for a season three i hope there's a season three i mean if there's not a season three then i think season two was kind of a waste but season three needs to happen and honestly i can't wait i can't wait i think season two was fantastic i think it delivered all the shots you wanted i think if you were a fan of the season one we're back baby we're back to sense eight so i want to thank you guys for listening if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel would really appreciate it like the video if you like it and comment below love to hear your guys's thoughts i am dan the man aka daniel's son and you can find more videos on my youtube channel please subscribe like and comment Thank you guys and